today, a serious car crash brings a double trauma into A&E for emergency help. She had a head-on collision with another vehicle, closing speed approximately 70 miles an hour. A fishing trip goes wrong for security guard Paul Gamble. I've just got no feeling in my hands and my arm up to just past my elbow at the moment. And biker Jonathan Davison has an amazing escape from a high-speed crash. I can't see any broken bones. He is one of the luckiest men in Britain today. This is the real A&E. Real people, real problems and real rescues. The air ambulance is racing into the hospital helipad carrying a road accident victim. In the recess area of University Hospital, working mum Dr Amy Jones is part of the team preparing for this latest patient. Amy started in A&E soon after qualifying and knew it was the job for her. Absolutely loved it, really loved it, and I've pretty much been here ever since, so just doing sort of various different jobs within the department. Hey, we're a really good team here, you know, everybody works together and cooperates really well. The helicopter patient is a 19-year-old girl, Liz Keys, who's been in a head-on collision. Amy already knows roughly what to expect. She's got some seatbelt injuries, so some pain in her chest, and they're querying whether or not she's fractured her pelvis. A fractured pelvis puts major nerves and blood vessels at risk. It can be very bad news and needs immediate attention. But as Liz is brought in, a road ambulance arrives with Tom Hill, the driver of the other car. Liz is already in recess and Amy is assessing her condition. Information from the air ambulance team is a vital help. Right, this is Lizzie. She's 19 years old. She's a general farm worker on her way home. Um, she had a head-on collision with another vehicle, closing speed approximately 70 miles an hour. Pilot Dan Martin has pictures of the scene on his video camera. The two cars hit head-on on a country road. Farm worker Liz was on her way home from a new job milking the cows when the accident happened. She's got abrasions to elbows, hips, knees. The experienced emergency department team knows that an impact this severe could mean broken bones, bruised lungs or other internal injuries. And Liz is clearly in pain. Dr James Evans is taking care of the other crash victim, 58-year-old Tom Hill. As a child, Tom was in another bad accident and lost a leg but it seems this time he's got off more lightly. He's just complaining of some sort of right shoulder pain, probably where the, the belts come across, and then also point down in his pelvis, so where the lap belts come across him. But the car's hit at 70 miles an hour, so James can't take chances. Tom needs an X-ray to check his spine is not cracked, and he's probably got a broken collarbone. Clinically, there's a step in it, so uh, we expect to find that that's fractured on the X-ray. But Amy is concerned that Liz's problems are more serious. In another area of A&E, security guard Paul Gamble and his wife Jackie are waiting in reception. I was fishing my brother last night and I think I got bitten and my arms come out like a balloon, so you can see the difference and obviously the redness where the actual poison is spreading. I've just got no feeling in my hands and my arm up to just past my elbow at the moment. Mr. Gamble. Oh, they're saying, OK. Paul is called in to see Dr. Mark Maddock. Good stuff. Right, do you want to pop yourself in there? I'm Mark, I'm one of the doctors here. Fine. Well, should we have a look? Right. Oh, yeah, it's warm, isn't it? Isn't it just? Do you feel OK in yourself? Last night, I could put my arm comfortable, keep the okay. top tongue Um Sick a couple of times. Whatever has bitten Paul's arm has set off a chain reaction, and his symptoms suggest there is poison building up in his system. Your skin works as a natural barrier to infection. Right. OK, so if you make a hole in your skin, there's always a possibility that bacteria and things will get in. And then the infection within it just spreads up inside the skin layers and you get something yeah. called a cellulitis. In an ideal world, I'd like to keep you in for a bit, I think. But I'll have a chat to my boss. They're much better at these things than me. I'm just a junior. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, OK, I'll be back to you in a minute. Thanks a lot. The only concern I've got is he's saying he might have to keep me in for a bit, which I don't really want. I'd rather just have what they need to do and go home. We just have to see what the doctor comes back with and see whether he has got to stop it, not if he has to, he has to, so just want him better and back home. While Dr Maddock takes advice, Paul and Jackie have an anxious wait. Over in the recess area, the emergency team are still assessing 19-year-old Liz Key's injuries. Is that hurting your foot, Lizzie? Yes, on my elbow as well. 
Liz has been in a head-on car crash and she's in lots of pain. Is that hurting in your arm? Is that one? Is the left one That's or the right one? one? Yeah. OK. The important thing is to remember that each patient, when they come in, is really scared in general of, you know, and the fact that they've come into hospital, that it's a new experience, that they're, they're ill and that there's something wrong with them and trying to remember that. Actually, it's a, it's a very scared person, generally speaking. Hello there, I'm Hannah. I'm one of the trauma doctors. Specialist doctors have been called to help. A broken pelvis can cause dramatic and serious blood loss, so this check is vital. Sorry, my love. <laughs> Sorry, that's all done. She feels pretty solid. It's good news. Liz's pelvis can withstand a CT scan, which checks for other internal injuries. The other accident victim, Tom Hill, has been for an X-ray to check for broken bones, and the results are through. On his chest x-ray, there's a very, very small fracture down his rib, and he's got some point tenderness when you touch that part of his chest. Um, and as we suspected, he has got a fractured clavicle. It's in the typical place. It's right in the middle of his clavicle, and like, I think four out of five are always there. A broken clavicle, or collarbone, is a common seatbelt injury in high-speed crashes. It's very painful and can bring complications. The only risk, you can get some nerve damage just where the, if the bone's gone down injured the nerve and popped back into place. So it would be a sort of slow healing process and quite uncomfortable for him. I think he's an engineer as well, so it's going to, probably going to have some impact on his, his working for the next few weeks. Liz, who was driving the other car, is now in the full-body CT scanner. She was complaining of some chest pain uh, and uh, some abdominal tenderness, so there might be something going on in there. And uh, this method... Uh, gives us a, a, a very good chance that we're going to detect all the important injuries very quickly. The CT scanner can check every part of Liz's body for internal bruising, bleeding or organ damage. After such a high-speed crash, all of these are serious concerns. Yesterday, security guard Paul Gamble was bitten by an insect while fishing. His arm is infected and the poison has been spreading. It's quite a common thing we see in terms of um, people getting bitten and then developing infections. We all have bacteria that live on the skin naturally, and when you break this skin, they can go inside and it's nice and warm and there's lots of nutrients in there they can use to thrive on. Paul's got cellulitis, an under-the-skin infection that can cause lasting damage if left untreated. Dr Maddock has taken advice from more senior colleagues. Hello again. Has it got any better? Is it brilliant? Well, <laughs> see, good trip to hospital. <laughs> what would you like to do? I want to go away. Now, I'd be happy to send you home with some antibiotics for a week. Right. On the basis that we that you keep an eye on it. Yeah. And if you start becoming unwell and developing symptoms such as a raging fever, then you you need to come back to us and um, wear some of that mosquito repellent in future. It's very important to be sure the infection isn't spreading. And Dr Maddock has a fail-safe way of checking. We're going to draw around it. If the redness goes over the line, Paul has to come back. It's not quite as permanent as the other markers you've got in your skin anyway, so... Mm. Not bad luck. That's having a tattoo up, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> if only they were all like that, eh? Yeah. So I'm definitely allowed to go out now, then? Yeah, go on, I'll even show you where the door is. <laughs> Even with the high-dose antibiotics, the swelling took 10 days to go completely, and Paul had a week off work. But it hasn't put him off fishing. Car accident victim Liz Keyes has been having a full body scan after being in a 70-mile-an-hour crash. When you get high-energy impacts like that, and you get uh, bruised lungs, collapsed lungs, collections of blood in the chest, blood loss into the abdomen, damage to the liver, to the spleen, kidneys, and there was none of that. We scanned her head, neck, abdomen and pelvis, and uh, there wasn't anything on it of any significance, which is very good news. Liz has got away with almost no damage, but an X-ray reveals some minor bone injuries. Uh, two fractures. Uh, one foot fracture and one wrist fracture. So she's staying in her observation ward. And there's been a lucky escape for the other driver too. Tom's got a broken collarbone. My son's still got a mum and dad with him, so I think so. I'm still here. Tom's able to go back home after a couple of days and his collarbone will heal.
Liz has an overnight stay in hospital, but she'll be discharged with her mum by the end of the day. Could have been much worse. Could have been much worse. Well, look at it. It's, it's not going to beat me. Just get up and keep on going. A happy ending. But such accidents leave their mark on Amy Jones. I'm petrified driving home sometimes. Not so much, not particularly for my driving, but just absolutely paranoid. Everybody else on the road is going to try and drive into me. I just tend to sit in the slow lane at the end of a queue of heavy lorries rather than overtake them, because they, uh, they put the, uh, the fear of God into me sometimes. Coming up, a biker injured in a high-speed crash has flown in for emergency care. He's pretty high speed. He ended up about 100 metres away from the car that hit him. And young and old in Coventry fall victim to first-degree burns.